Good afternoon, or whenever you are watching this, and welcome to Worship on the Water, Sundays at 6, our weekly worship gathering. This week, due to cold temperatures, we won't be gathering in person, but we invite you to celebrate with us this Baptism of Christ Sunday. I know it's been a difficult, scary, and even traumatizing week in our country, and we believe that as Christians, God's Spirit empowers us to resist evil and justice and, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves. And so we will be renewing our baptisms later on in this service. So I invite you to have maybe a, a water bottle, a little bit of water, or even just be prepared to pause the video to get up and to touch the water and to remember that you are God's beloved. And so now let us pray. Oh God, who broke open the heavens and came down, not in what we would call a mighty show of power, not to serve yourself, but to serve us. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit again would descend like a dove of peace, not a peace that is simply the absence of conflict, but that peace that makes all things right that makes all things new. Speak to us today, God, and help us to listen. We ask these things in the name of Christ, our Lord, the one in whom we share our identity. Amen. <laughs> John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. 
and the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. to us and help us to listen. And may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There's one image that I can't get out of my mind this terrifying week in which we saw a domestic terror attack at our U.S. Capitol. The image is not one of violence, although those are hard to get out of my mind either. The image that I've been thinking the most about is not a Confederate flag flying through the halls of Congress the first time that that flag has ever flown in the U.S. Capitol. And it's not the pictures of violence, of unrest, of chaos. It's a picture of someone leaning down, kneeling down and washing someone's feet. Maybe the most beloved picture of our servant Jesus, Lord. The man was not literally washing feet. He was Representative Andy Kim of New Jersey, someone who I had never heard of before and might never hear of again. He had not been present in the Capitol building when the terror attacks unfolded, but he was summoned back. <laughs> and at about midnight or one in the morning, he looked around. He looked around and saw this place that he considered sacred, if not in a religious sense, in a civic sense. Having been stormed, having been desecrated. He saw water bottles and coffee cups slung around everywhere, blood on the floor. Representative Kim saw the primarily African-American custodial staff that were being asked, as has been asked of them so many times in our history and in the past year, to clean up someone else's mess. 
And so he wordlessly got down on his hands and knees, got a trash bag and started picking up the trash. It gives me chills to think about. I it's Representative Kim and this idea of what it means to follow Jesus that has been going through my mind at the later part of this week as we read the scripture. We always focus on the spirit coming down, the spirit empowering us, giving us gifts to serve God's church. We always focus on Jesus going down into the water, this voice that uh, speaks. It says the heavens were torn open. This veil between heaven and earth is rent apart. But when I read on the baptism of Jesus story this week, and then when I read it in light of what I've seen on my phone and on the news, there are just a couple things that kept standing out. Repent, confess, make this better. It literally means to turn around. As scripture says, to stop doing evil and to do good. Repentance is one of these things that we ask of everyone who becomes a Christian. It's a hard thing to say, I am a sinner. I am in need of God's grace. I am in need of forgiveness. And maybe this is a day to remember our belovedness, but it is also a day as we remember our baptisms to repent. I have heard another phrase over and over this week. This is not who we are. <laughs> this is not America. This is not Jesus. This is not Christianity. This is not who we are. And I have thought these things. I have said them. But this week, I was cut to the heart and driven to repentance when I read so many of my Black clergy colleagues, so many people of color who are brothers and sisters in Christ. It says, with love, this is who we are. Maybe what took place this week in the Capitol doesn't take place every day in our country. I thank God that it doesn't. But as I have been reminded um, this year, last year, over the past few years, and especially again this week, that violence, that white supremacy, domestic terrorism even, is who we are. Even within the Christian church, and sometimes and I hate to say it, especially within the Christian church. My colleagues reminded me that through their words and their prayers, they reminded me that this is who we are in America when we took land from and killed hundreds, thousands of Native Americans. It is who we were when we allowed human beings, beloved children of God to be bought and sold like they were property for people to be kidnapped and taken from their parents. It is who we were when we allowed certain people to go to better schools, better businesses, to hold office, and others not because of the color of their skin. Here in Wilmington, we remember that this is who we were. In 1898, when black, government officials and businessmen and women were flourishing and because of hatred, because of anger, because of jealousy, there was a white supremacist mob that took over and overthrew the duly elected government. This is who we are, my beloved. I wonder if in our baptisms, we look at the whole of who we are who we are, who I am individually, but also who we are as a body, as a church, as a capital C church, the Christian community, those who follow Jesus of all ages, nations, and races. When we go down to the Jordan River to be baptized, we breathe in, we breathe out. We accept that we are sinners all of us, just as we are. Breathe in, breathe out. We accept that we are beloved, all of us, just as we are. And that God, a God who says that 
he loves us and that we are beloved does not leave us in our sin. God calls us to account, calls us to repent, calls us to confess, calls us to kneel down and to serve others, calls us to become holy. When we remember our baptisms, when we go down into the Jordan River to be baptized, we say, yes, this is who we are. Yes, we may not have taken guns or stockpiled bombs and weapons. We may not have placed bombs at the Republican and Democratic National Convention headquarters this week. We may not have built a noose and gallows right there near the center of our government. We may not have erected a giant cross not far away. We may not have gathered zip ties or used anti-Semitic hate symbols. A couple ones I saw this week said 6MWE, which stands for six million weren't enough, referring to those who died in the Holocaust. We may not have used our platforms to inflame crowds or spread mistruths in a way that brought bloodshed or chaos. But if I am honest and if you are honest, Aren't there things that we have done or left undone? I don't know what is your list to confess, but mine might look something like this. I haven't carried a sign of hate speech, but I might have cared more about not looking racist than actually not being racist. I may not have planted a bomb or let folks come by me to cause violence to others. But I have listened to jokes being made or mistruths being spread or hateful things being said without correcting them, whether forcefully or gently in love. I may not say that people who look like me and think like me are better, but I may have let my circle of closest friends and people look very much like me. I have shied away from having hard conversations because I was afraid or felt like I couldn't handle it. I may have been one of those people who talks a big game on social media, but who has failed to show up with my money or with my time, with my evenings, with my body, when my brothers and sisters who are not white say they need me there. When people of color say they have experienced discrimination, I have said to myself, well, I'm not sure if it's really as bad as all that. I know that person. I know that place and that hasn't been my experience. Jesus hears our words of confession. Jesus sees us when we repent. That word repent literally means turn around. If you've been going in one direction or going in no direction at all, but maybe pointed the right way, Jesus invites us to turn around, to turn our back on evil and injustice and oppression, to accept the good news. Jesus hears us. Jesus sees us. The Jesus who went down into the mess of the Jordan River, swirling with so many people's sins. Though he was rich, he became poor. Though he was righteous, he took on our sin. Though he had all power, he became powerless. He was born as a brown-skinned baby who grew up a brown-skinned, poor, homeless carpenter in a place that was occupied by the Roman Empire. This Jesus, the Jesus of Scripture, died naked and alone on a cross. This Jesus, the Jesus that we worship and who invites us to join with him in baptism, went down into the Jordan River and is waiting to forgive us, to give us new strength, to give us new hope, to build a new world. But the first step that we take in remembering our baptisms is to repent, to confess our sins before God will make us new. There are people who will not want us to repent and confess. <laughs> we have many people in the world all the way from our aunts and uncles, parents, the neighborhood dog catcher, all up to national leaders who will say that we have nothing to repent from, nothing to be ashamed from, ashamed of. This was a one-off incident and it'll never happen again. It hasn't happened before, people will say. 
And yet, as so many of us with white skin listened with shock, many of our Christian brothers and sisters who were black or brown were not shocked. They have seen any attempt to point out racism gently being met with incredible resistance, even while white folks with guns broke into the Capitol and were addressed with words that said, we love you, you are very special. Ironically, friends, this is what God tells Jesus, what God tells all of us at our baptisms, is that I love you and you are beloved. And that is God's honest truth, that our belovedness is the most important thing about us, not our sin. And yet, the God who calls us beloved, the God who says, I love you, he does not say that we are more or less special that we are supreme based on the color of our skin. Our belovedness does not depend on being more and others being less. God's belovedness is offered to every single one of us, but the belovedness also requires something of us, that we can't stay in the moment, we can't remain in this mountaintop place of seeing the heavens torn apart, hearing God speaking God's words to us, the spirit descending to us, and not go into the uncomfortable place of telling the truth about ourselves and about our world. Our belovedness helps us to go to places we don't wanna go. That knowledge of our belovedness helps us to do things we don't wanna do. It helps us say things that really terrify us. And I'll be honest, I feel very uncomfortable speaking these words right now. Our belovedness helps us speak the truth, even when our voice shakes at work, at the kitchen table, on family group chats, or Thanksgiving dinners, or even out of the store. Right after Jesus heard those words from heaven, the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan, where he was visited by wild beasts. But Jesus knew who he was. He was God's beloved. He was loved. Right after John called the people to confess and to repent, right after John baptized them in the river, did you see it in our scripture? It said John was arrested for speaking the truth to people who held power. And Jesus took up the message that John had been proclaiming. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. My beloved brothers and sisters, I believe Jesus is saying the same thing to us today, even as the sirens go call outside my window. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Reverend Bernice King, who is the daughter of Martin Luther King, quoted her father this week after the events on Wednesday, she said, as my father always said, the time is always ripe to do what is right. The Christian writer Deidre Riggs said this, before you talk about unity, get down on your knees and repent, and then get up and do justice. And then get back down on your knees and repent again. And then get up and do justice again. Do this over and over and over. And after you've done that for a while, then then we'll talk about unity. Her words reminded me that unity means nothing if unity is not oneness in following Jesus. Not the Jesus that says that white people are worth more than others, but the real Jesus. The Jesus who knelt down, who washed feet, and maybe, I believe, would have been right beside Representative Andy Kim picking up the trash, the mess that he did not make. The good news that is, even if we have contributed to making the mess, as I have, that violence and hate and white supremacy and chaos do not have the last word. The good news is that there is one who is supreme and his name is Jesus. And he was a brown-skinned Jewish homeless carpenter from Galilee that was the one who was the Son of God. The good news is that belovedness is not a pie. And so more justice, more belovedness, 
more peace for others does not mean less for us. The good news is that we are set free from the need to be blameless or perfect, to deny our sins. We can say, I am a person of unclean lips and an unclean life. And oh God, we need you to make us whole. The good news is this, that we go down into the river together and we rise up together. And that means every single one of us belongs to every single other one of us. There is no segregated heaven. There is no segregated baptism. And if others are calling out that they are hurting, those hurts are to be ours too. And so I call you friends. There is renewal down there in the water, kneeling down to pick up the mess that we have made and maybe even the mess that others have. There is the opening of eyes down in the water. And down there, we will meet the one who went down to the water with all of the sins of humanity upon his shoulders. In the water, we meet the Jesus who gave himself on the cross. That cross has been used for a whole lot of things that are not the way of Christ. That cross has been used as a symbol of fear, burned in the yards of black brothers and sisters and Jewish brothers and sisters. But that cross that has been used as a symbol of fear or a symbol of power is instead a symbol of sacrificial love. The cross says, God says to us, I receive all the worst parts of you from me and you all the way to the worst of humanity. God receives all the worst parts of us and offers us forgiveness, new life, a new chance to be whole again. Friends, I invite you to join with me to maybe pause the video and to grab a little bit of water. And I invite you to join with me in renewing your baptismal vows, to go down and repent and then to get up and do justice, to kneel down and repent and to get up again and do justice. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift. We call it grace offered to us without price. And so on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you 
Freedom and power not over others, but freedom and power to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. If so, your answer is I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say I do. And do we, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both our rejection of sin and our commitment to Christ? If so, say we do. And let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. I invite you, as maybe as I say these words, to, um, to close your eyes or to say them along with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Through baptism, we are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation, and we are made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And I invite you, friends, to touch the water or maybe to pause the video and to go run your fingers under the faucet to look at that water, to remember the waters of your baptism and to remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish us and strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may live in grace and peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, sia santificato il tuo nome. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Amen.
Sunday, we won't be meeting in in person for worship on the water. We'll have a virtual service for you to view sometime during the week. But I also invite you to um, join me as I'll be attending our community Martin Luther King Jr. interfaith service on Zoom. So you don't even have to uh, don't even have to leave your house. I bet you don't even have to turn your video on. We'll be sending out information on that in the e-blast. And feel free to contact um, someone at the church office or myself if you have any questions on how to join in on that. And now, friends, may the God of Jesus Christ, who went down into the water, there with the swirling sins of hundreds of people and who rose up to be called beloved. May that God help you know that you are beloved, that you are loved so much and so unconditionally that you can have the strength to repent, to take some moments, 15 minutes, 20, to face yourself, to listen to the voice of the Spirit as to what God would call you to do, to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. May God comfort you when you are afflicted. But when you are too comfortable, may God afflict you with the voice of the Holy Spirit so that you may confess, so that you may repent, so that you may be forgiven. Amen, friends. Go in peace. Amen.